are these kids? Rejects from hell? Hey, Luann, you said you wanted to teach. This is another film that I hadn't watched in a really long time, so I was interested to see how I would feel about it now. And honestly, I like this movie even more. I hadn't seen this since I was a preteen, so there were so many moments that I noticed and understood now that I didn't then. Luann's interactions with certain students were awesome to watch. These students were craving hope, honesty, and for someone to give them a chance or to simply see them as normal kids instead of menaces to society. It was deep. Of course, I noticed some things while watching this film, and you know I have my thoughts. But before we get to that, it's time to recap. So let's get into it. As the movie starts, we meet our main character, Luann. Luann is a former Marine who is in need of a job. Her friend, Hal, has referred her to the school where he teaches. She meets with the school director, Carla, to discuss an open position she applied for. There was a red flag when Luann was hired immediately on the spot and given a higher position as a teacher instead of the student teacher position she applied for. My antennas would have gone up immediately because why are you so desperate? Oh, let me also mention that three other substitute teachers quit in a short time frame. Triple red flag. What Carla doesn't elaborate on and what Hal struggles to tell Luann is that she won't be teaching a classroom full of wholesome students. No, she will be teaching rowdy, bust-in teens from another part of town who can be quite interesting. Now, Hal tried his best to give Luann a little hint about what she had gotten herself into. I guess I can give him a little credit, though he didn't try as hard as he should have. But Luann was excited and didn't want him to damper the moment with what she perceived as him doubting her. When her first day comes, Hal walks her to a classroom. He even tells her that he's right next door if she needs him. Luann is just so excited and hopeful. She enters the classroom and child, students are dancing, rapping, talking, everything but what they're supposed to be doing. She walks up to one of the students and asks what happened to the prior substitute teachers and the student jumps up and gets the other student's attention. The students blurt out that they killed the prior teachers, they ran them off, and all this other stuff. The class leader, Emilio, walks up to Luann to add to the chaos. That bitch was too ugly to eat. Fed her to my dogs, but I'll eat you. Mind you, up until this point, Luann was smiling at this as if she was just so amused and not taking any of it seriously. But when Emilio got up and got in her face, she finally realized what she had gotten herself into. And now she wanted answers from Hal. Who are these kids? Rejects from hell? Hey, Luann, you said you wanted to teach. Luann doesn't feel she could teach them. And it was funny how Hal was making light of her feelings, but you didn't see him rushing to teach them either. But he does tell her that all she has to do is get their attention and get them engaged. So Luann goes home and does a little research, a little reading to get her mind right. As she spends most of the night deciding on her approach, she finally feels ready. Okay, you little bastards. So Luann pulls out her finest, I'm not a regular teacher, I'm a cool tough teacher gear, a leather jacket, denim jeans, and boots, and gets to her classroom bright and early to set the tone. The students walk in, and of course, they don't take her seriously. They proceed to ignore and do the same things as yesterday. She takes Hal's advice about grabbing their attention, and she writes on the board that she's a Marine and asks if the students know karate. Honestly, getting the kids to do karate in the classroom was a very risky move, but it works, and she gets their attention. She gets these two up and shows them how to do a karate move, and it gets the students excited and engaged. She informs the students that she will be starting them off with an A and it will be their responsibility to keep it. The students are shocked by this. Some of them have either never seen an A or haven't seen one in a very long time. This gives the students some motivation to do what they have to do to keep it. 
The next day, things are a little better between Luann and the students. She tried to get straight to her lesson, but still struggled with getting all the students to engage. So she pulls another attention-getting stunt by writing this question on the board. Is that true? <laughs> if we want to die, shit, no. We want you to die. <laughs> Is that true? Luann and the students have a conversation about choice, and one of the students, Callie, explains the verb choose and what it means to her. Callie is one of the few students who are eager to learn. She was really intelligent as well. She shows Luann a book that she's reading for one of her classes, and Luann is underwhelmed by it. As she was observing the book, Carla came in to inform her that the principal would like to talk to her after class. After her class is over, she goes to Principal Grandy's office, and Carla was there waiting for her. She doesn't knock when she enters his office, which really irritates the principal. This is an important thing to note for some events that happen later. But the principal scolded Luann about the impromptu karate lesson she gave to her students and how it's so very important that she sticks to the approved curriculum, even though it's complete trash and not keeping the students engaged. Luann also starts to notice that this school needs more resources. How in the hell do they not have paper to print or copy? Like, what's going on at this school? The next day, the students were more engaged. It does help that Luann passes out candy whenever the students give her a correct answer. Full-size candy bars at that. Luann passes out a poem that she would like the students to read, and she promises them that when they complete the poem, she'd take them to an amusement park. The students ask if they have to pay, and Luann tells them that the board will pay for them. Emilio calls her bluff and suggests that she's lying and giving them empty promises. After this, the students stop engaging in class, and the class ends soon after. Callie gives Luann a helpful tip by telling her that if she wants the class to listen, she would need to get Emilio on board. She talks to Hal after school, and their convo sparks an idea that she will later use for her class involving writers Dylan Thomas and Bob Dylan. The next day in class, Luann has the students read the lyrics to a Bob Dylan song, Mr. Tambourine Man. The kids become more interested when Luann tells them that the Tambourine Man is a code name for drugs. She tries to bring Emilio into the convo, but he's still being stubborn. Later that day, Luann and Hal have lunch together. We learn a little bit about their history. Hal's ex-best friend was her ex-husband. He stopped being friends with him after their divorce. Besides Hal setting Luann up to be stressed out by these students, he's actually a good guy. He tries to encourage her to come and hang out with his family, but Luann tells him it's too soon and she's just not ready yet. The next day, Luann sees commotion happening with the students and realizes that Emilio and Raul are about to come to blows. She gets in between them and states that Emilio is two times bigger than Raul and shouldn't be picking a fight with him. She tries her best to get them to not take it any further. Is it over? Yeah? Yes, yeah, Simon. Absolutely. They told her what she wanted to hear. Of course they are fighting later. Luann didn't catch on to this at first until Angela, Emilio's girlfriend, told her that it wasn't over and they were going to finish their fight later. And of course, they did just that and the next time Luann saw Raul, he was being hauled off by the cops. She stops to talk to him and figures out what's going on. Raul tells her that he had to fight Emilio because if he didn't, others would think he was an easy target. Luann feels responsible for their fight since she mentioned that Emilio was bigger than him and could easily take him, which forced Raul to prove her and Emilio wrong. I'm not sure why they hauled Raul off and left Emilio in detention when it was known that he was the aggressor, but you know, this school is run by idiots, so... Anyway, Luann finds Emilio and asks why he feels the need to be a bully. She even wondered out loud if he dealt with the same type of behavior at home. But Emilio didn't have time for her questions. You like to hit people. You feel angry a lot of the time. So now you're going to try and psychologize me? You're going to try and figure me out? Child. Emilio tells her that he's from a broken home. And Luann insists that she'd like to help him. But he doesn't believe her since she doesn't realize what he's up against. Luann tracks down the address for Raul's parents. When she goes to visit, his parents start on a tangent about how they warned him about getting into trouble and how he doesn't listen. 
But Luen vouches for Raul and tells his parents that he was only defending himself and didn't do anything wrong. But he didn't do anything wrong. He must be very proud. He's very bright. And the truth is, he's, he's one of my favorites. The sad part is, this was probably the first time Raul and his parents have heard someone speak so highly of him. His own parents probably haven't said good things about him. That must have made him feel so good to hear that. After she leaves Raul's, she goes to speak with Emilio's parents, but we didn't get to see their convo. The next day, the students stopped engaging again. They were mad at her and thought she caused Raul and Emilio to get in trouble and suspended. It was funny to me how Emilio was right there and could speak for himself, but everyone else picked up their burden for him. I'm pretty sure he could speak for himself. But Luann defends herself and tells the students they are free to leave her class if they want. They don't leave, but they do have another argument about choice. I will not carry myself down to die. When I go to my grave, my head will be high. That is a choice. There are no victims in this classroom. After all this commotion, Emilio finally decides to open his mouth and engage with the lesson for the first time. And like the followers they are, the other students fall in line. You wouldn't go under the ground if someone told you death was coming, but you would go into the ground if you were already dead. From here, all the students are engaged and eager to learn and the energy in the classroom shifts. Emilio acknowledges how cool it was that she went to visit Raul at Emilio's homes. He starts to respect her from here. Luann kept her promise and took the kids to the amusement park and of course, old principal has something to say about it. He asked how the amusement park thing came about and Luann lied telling him that the kids invited her but she paid for everyone. He didn't believe it, but then again, what could he do about it? This wasn't by any chance their reward for reading poetry, was it? So. In my class, Mr. Grandy, poetry is its own reward. Luann introduced a challenge to her called the Dylan Dylan contest. The prize would be a fancy dinner with her. The challenge was that the students had to find a poem that Dylan Thomas wrote that was similar to a Bob Dylan song. The kids take this challenge seriously, even grouping up in the library to do some research. You would think the librarians would have been excited to see the students willingly hanging out in the library. Child, they were over there judging them the whole time. These three figure out the answer. Rage, rage against the dying of the way. Do not go gentle, that's like saying don't go easy. It was the same as I will not go down. You just well, run some other things they were super excited to win the contest, but unfortunately, Callie couldn't go because she had to go to work on the night of the dinner. Luann offered to bring her dinner to her job. On the night of the fancy dinner, only Raul was able to make it since the other group member had to work as well. This restaurant was way too fancy for Raul. He was intimidated by it all, but Luann encouraged him to order his food and speak up for himself so that he could feel more comfortable in spaces he wasn't familiar with. That was good for her to do. It could be hard to try new things when you fear being perceived. During their dinner, Raul tells Luann that he will be missing class due to him having to work and pay back the guy he bought his $200 jacket from. Luann was confused on why he spent so much on the jacket and Raul informed her that he didn't have anything nice to wear and didn't have many options. Luann offers to give Raul the money. But I do have one condition. Big? Huge. Jesus Christ, what is it? Luann tells him she would give him the money and he would pay her back by graduating. While he can't believe the terms of their deal, he eventually agrees to it. I don't get it, why do you care so much if I graduate? Weird, isn't it? You have my word. Later, when she drops Callie's food off, she learns that Callie will be transferring to Clearview since she's pregnant. Callie mentioned that since she was pregnant, the school required her to transfer so that she could prepare for motherhood. Luann didn't like the thought of this since Callie was one of her best students. So the next day, Luann speaks with Carla about Callie. She finds out that Callie didn't have to leave her current school and that it was only Carla's preference. So you make them think they have to leave. Just push him out a little earlier, make it a little harder, make it a little more hopeless. Carla felt that pregnancy was contagious and that having Callie around the school visibly pregnant would encourage the other students to get pregnant as well. Of course, Luann figures out a way for this not to happen. 
Luann visits Callie at home to tell her the good news. She can continue going to the same school and she doesn't have to transfer to Clairview. But Callie doesn't respond in the way that she thought she would. Callie is still persistent about going to Clairview, but it turns out it's her boyfriend who's pushing her to go. He's telling her that she needs to go there to learn how to care for their family. Since Luann has experience with this type of situation, she pulls Callie to the side to talk privately. She tells Callie about her abusive ex-husband, and though Callie doesn't say much about her boyfriend, you can tell that she can relate to Luann's story. The next day at school, we see Emilio beefing with this guy in the courtyard. He threatens to kill Emilio for taking his girl, Angela, away from him while he was locked up. Luann goes to check on two more of her students since they've been missing from class. She wasn't able to say much to them because their grandmother came out and child, she has some choice words for Luann. I'm Luann Johnson, I'm the boys teacher. I know who you are. You're that white bread bitch messing with my baby's mind. She tells Luann that the twins should be more focused on helping her pay bills than continuing school with dreams of becoming doctors and lawyers. The most messed up part of this scene is that some parents really think like this. I'll discuss this in the final thoughts because this scene really irked my nerves. Luann starts to feel down about losing three of her best students and finds it hard to focus while teaching class. But the remaining students get her mind right and get her back on track. They are choosing to engage and learn at this point and holding her accountable as well. Later that day, Luann runs into Emilio and Angela in the school courtyard. Angela tells Luann that Emilio is strapped because her ex has threatened to kill him for being with her. Luann tells Emilio that he should stay with her and he shouldn't be too proud to hide. He resists at first, but eventually he does what Angela and Luann wants and goes to Luann's to hide out. Later, while Emilio and Luann are at her place, she asked him about the guy wanting to kill him. She thinks she can get the school involved, get the guy sent to juvie, and spare Emilio some time. Emilio thinks about this for a split second, but in the end, he doesn't want to snitch. But what's so crazy is that he doesn't mind having to kill him instead. The fact that you'd rather kill somebody than walk around with the shame of being a snitch is wild. But that's his reality. During the night, Emilio leaves Luann's without telling her and Luann doesn't notice till the morning. When she gets to school, she asks Principal Grandy if he'd seen Emilio. He admits he saw him earlier but turned him away because he didn't knock. Let me repeat this for emphasis. The principal, with his dumb ass, turned Emilio away in his time of need because he didn't knock. Cha. Shortly after, Carla comes by Luann's class to let her know that Emilio's body was found. She also tells Luann not to tell the students for fear that they'd start a riot. Carla doesn't know these kids for real. Luann doesn't listen to Carla and she tells the students about Emilio and of course, they take it hard, but they don't riot like Carla thought they would. We fast forward to Luann informing the class that it will be her final year teaching at their school. She tries to give them the excuse that she didn't sign on to be a permanent teacher and that she's doing other things. The students see right through her and know she's taking not only Emilio's death hard, but also the loss of her best students. A few days later, Raul helps Luann pack up her room. He thanks her for giving him the $200 for the coat and tells her that it was the nicest thing anyone had ever done for him. Luann encouraged him to keep doing well in school and that she couldn't wait to see him graduate. But Raul was unsure if he could do that if Luann wasn't going to be his teacher. Luann assures him that he's much smarter than he realizes and that he's more than capable. Raul makes a last ditch effort by having Callie return to class to see Luann on her last day. Her students remind her about choice and the recurring theme of the poems they'd read in class being to never give up and how she was going against all of that. If the person who taught them this couldn't even stay true to the message, why should they? The students had grown to love Luann and they were not letting her go without a fight. Now listen, baby, we gonna have to tie you down to the chair and gag you cause you know we want you to stay. This last ditch effort worked and Luann chose to stay. How'd they get you to come back? They gave me candy and called me the light. And that's the end of the movie. And here are my final thoughts. As I said before, I do feel this movie aged pretty well. I do feel like I connected with this film more as an adult 
than I did when I was younger. And I mean, that's supposed to happen. But the biggest thing for me was that these students weren't given a chance and that was based on Carla and the principal's preconceived notions of them. They looked at them as trouble or not worth the effort. So they didn't provide them with the best books or they would side eye them when they went to the library or if they got pregnant, even if they were a great student, they would encourage them to go somewhere else out of fear that their bad choices would corrupt the other students. They saw no hope for them and really just tolerated them. Luann came in full of optimism, which didn't last long, but what was different about her was that she tried to meet them where they were. She tried to speak their language and capture their attention. She saw their worth when others assumed they were worthless and not worth the effort. And the kids were used to people in society viewing them a certain way. So when Luann came in speaking positivity and encouraging them, they didn't believe her or questioned her intentions. Like, why do you want to help us? Why do you believe in us? Our own community doesn't believe in us. Our own families don't believe in us. So who are you? One scene that stood out to me was when she went to go see Raul and his family and Raul's father started to criticize him for getting in trouble for his fight with Emilio and complained about him not listening and Luann stood up for him. She told his parents that he was a great student who had a bright future ahead of him and how they should be so proud of him and you saw his face light up and his parents looked so shocked to hear such good things about their own child. Raul probably never heard these good things about himself from other teachers probably not even his own parents so you know they had to feel so good for him to hear someone speak goodness about him i appreciated how luann would check on her students if they didn't show up to class or she would inquire about their lives she really cared about them as individuals and always tried to introduce them to new things i loved how she encouraged raul to order for himself in the restaurant and get comfortable with being in new spaces there are so many people, including me sometimes, that are so afraid to be perceived that they don't try new things or go to new places. They miss out on so many experiences because they don't want to seem out of place or ignorant. So I love that she encouraged him to be more comfortable in unfamiliar spaces. But let me get on this grandma and this damn principal and Carla, okay? That grandma pissed me off because one, she was dead wrong for forcing those kids to help her pay bills when they should have been in school. What do you mean they are incapable of being lawyers and doctors? Even if they don't want to be that, you don't even want them to be better than you, to not have to struggle like you, to not be in a limited position like you. The goal is for your children or any child to be in a better position than you. So the fact that you are actively limiting their opportunities in life is wild. And two, I know parents like this. And I always wonder like, what's the end goal? You just want some help with the bills. Okay, but at what cost though? It's stupid. If I was Luann and that principal told me that he turned Emilio away for not knocking, and then minutes later, I found out Emilio was dead, the way they would have to pull me off that man, I would have molly whopped him from sea to shine and sea because what was it that serious? No, it was not. And Carla telling Callie it was a requirement to go to another school due to her pregnancy when it was really just her preference? Instant pimp slap. These adults got on my nerves all throughout the movie, as you can tell. But all in all, I love this movie and I do believe, like I said before, it aged pretty well. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you do. Anyway, that's it for this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. For the next recap, all I'm going to say is 1996. It's a comedy that spoofs Dangerous Minds and other movies like it that stars some of our Black Hollywood faves and some forgotten 90s actors. See you next time, you guys. Bye.